Hey guys, welcome back. Our next guest is just 15 years old and she's already a rising star on the country music charts. But she's not only taking the music scene by storm, she's a role model and inspiration to her fans. Let's welcome recording artist Lizzie Sider to the show. Good morning. Hi, good morning. It's great to have you here. Thank you for having me. So you only set foot in Nashville, what, two years ago? And you've already, you've already started working with some of the best singers and songwriters in the business. I'll talk about your journey a little bit. It's been amazing from the first time that I picked up a p well, I, I uh, picked up the guitar to the first time I started playing the piano and then went to Nashville. And, and how old were you when you started doing all that? Well, I was six when I started playing piano. Okay. I picked up the guitar a few years ago and I made my first trip to Nashville when I was 13. Wow, wow. wow that sounds so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> and you were so old when you did that, yes. right? Yeah, we feel for you, right? Um, it, it's just been amazing. I've, I've grown so much, not only in my music and my writing, but just as a person. And I've gotten some, you know, to do some amazing things, to get to work with some amazing people. Yeah, so now you were you were bullied in grade school. I can't, mm -hmm. which I can't imagine. Right. Yeah. How, how could somebody ever bully you? I don't know why I was bullied. Maybe it was because I was musical. Maybe it be mm. was because I'm mature. But um, I don't think I'll ever know. But, yeah, it was a hard time for me to get through. They'd, um, there was a lot of ridicule and exclusion that would go on. Yeah. yeah. But you, you, you had the... You sang the national anthem, your classmates reacted to it, which inspired you a little bit to make some music. Right. Um, when I was nine years old, um, I got the opportunity to sing the national anthem mm. for the Boston Red Sox game at Fenway Park, which was really, really nice. fun. Yeah. Um, and my principal, when I came back to school, he wanted to show everyone. And I was so scared because I thought they were going to laugh at me. And, and I remember when he was showing it in our all, um, full school assembly, I was, you know, crouching down in my seat, and I was so scared. I was, I was almost crying. Mm -hmm. And when I, you know, when we came out, everyone was laughing, and they made fun of it. And even though I was very proud of myself, just in that moment, I felt so small. Yeah. And, and you know, I see even now yeah. it's emotional for you. Yeah. Right. And you're taking your message and you're sharing it. What are you telling others who are being bull bullied? Because I can clearly see it in your yeah. eyes now. Well, I think that it's something that just sticks with you. And I am only 15. It wasn't, you know, like I'm, I'm 35 years old talking about this. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm not happy that it happened, but I think that without that experience, I wouldn't be the same person. And I, I came out of it, you know, realizing that I have the strength within myself to overcome the hurt and the teasing or to overcome whatever situation I may be going through. And I'm currently on a 100 school um, bully prevention assembly tour throughout the you. entire state of Florida. So going into the schools, talking to the kids, singing some songs. And, and it's called No One Has the Power to Ruin Your Day. Nobody, Nobody. has the power Nobody. to ruin your <laughs> day. Nobody. Nobody has the power to ruin your day. That's what my dad told me. Um, and, and that really inspired me. And I hope that it is inspiring others. Yeah, so um, let's talk about the story behind your, your song, Butterfly. Well, um, Butterfly, I wrote about my experiences in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And I think that Butterfly is, is so universal because it talks about not only my experiences and, and just finding the strength within yourself to overcome whatever it is that you're mm -hmm. going through, whether it may be bullying or any hardship that, that you might be facing. Um, you know, we're, we're all different, we're all beautiful, and all we need to do is just to spread our wings and fly like a butterfly. Oh, That's amazing. That. <laughs> Lizzie, you know, I, I work with young girls just like you, and one of the things that I've found so difficult in working with them is to be able to tell them, you know what, you can do it, you can move on. And what's difficult for them is they don't have that motivating factor. What motivates you to get up every morning and to go out and say, hey, you can't overcome bullying? You know, um, it's always been my dream to inspire others, and, and I'm just a people person. I yeah. love it, yeah. um, and, and especially kids. I just I, yeah. I melt over their little people. <laughs> um, but you know, it's it's the the smiling faces and and the hugs and the messages and the letters and the posts that I get from all these people in my assemblies and even just you know that have listened to my music or my song Butterfly that tell me you inspire me or coming out of the assembly a few of the bullies were saying how they're not going to bully anymore because nice. you inspired yeah. them yeah. things like that and that you changed my life i mean it, it's it's such a surreal experience every single time 
and I just feel so fortunate to and have you know, this opportunity. It's interesting too because from an expressive arts therapy perspective, music is huge in mm -hmm. healing mm -hmm, and it's, it's a huge connector. Yeah. How does your guitar and playing the piano okay. and your songs not only heal you but heal others as well? I, I think that musical, that, that music is um, kind of a language that everybody speaks mm -hmm. and that you can be, you know, you, you can whatever age you are or whatever type of person you are, you can relate to music and I think it's so powerful and it is extremely powerful mm -hmm. for healing and I know that at any time I just want to relax or just find myself again, yeah. I can just dive into my instrument or song and I mm -hmm. just, I, I find home again. Do you yeah. have like a story of anyone in, in particular that has heard your butterfly story, uh, butterfly song and, and said, this is how it changed me? You know, there was this one story. Um, before I did this 100 school tour in Florida, I did over 80 schools in California throughout the wow. entire state. Um, and actually in April and May, I'm, go I'm going to be going to about 70 schools in Texas. Wow. So cool. very exciting. Yeah. Um, but there was this one girl after my assembly in California she came up to me, she gave me this bracelet of hers, and I said, are you sure you want to give this to me? This is beautiful. And um, she said, yes, I want you to have it. It's very special to me. Well, the principal came up to me after. I said, you know, are you sure? She said that this child has been through so many things, and, and she's, you know, jumped from one foster home to another, and she's just been through so many family um, issues, and she's, she's had trouble, you know, being herself and finding herself. And she said, to me that I want to give Lizzie this bracelet. It was, it was given to her by, by um, one of her foster mothers and it was very special to her life. And she said, I want to give Lizzie this bracelet because she taught me to be myself again. Aww, and and, and awesome. she taught me to believe in myself. That well, that'll keep you going for a while. Oh my gosh. About. What's all about? <laughs> I just, I just, I got all right, you know, we're gonna play a little game here. Uh, okay. We're gonna play a little game, it's called Yes and No. Uh, we're gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna ask you a question and afterwards, uh, you are going to perform for us, but I'm going to ask you a couple questions, okay. and then you say yes or, or no to it. All right. Okay. Uh, so we're going to throw out some hot topics okay. uh, in the news and okay. get your name. All right. First up, uh, the death test that can predict your fate. That can predict your fate. Uh, hmm. We've debated this topic on the show before, but an, the ante has been upped as scientists have developed a new blood test that can predict whether a person will die within the next five what? years. Uh, long story short, researchers found that the levels of four biomarkers in the body when taken together indicated a general level of frailty. Uh, if those are out of whack, even the healthy people in the person's, in, in, if they're out of whack and the person even five times, they're f five times more likely to die in the next five years. Yeah. So basically, like uh, we want to yeah. know, uh, if you knew about this it. test, <laughs> would you would you take it? You say no. No, no. that would drive me crazy no. if I... I say, I say yes. Really? You want to know when yes. you're going to die. I want to know. <laughs> Uh, you want to know when yes, you're going to die. Okay. Yes, I do. I, I feel like, you know, it, no second is wasted at that point. But what if right. the but no second is, is wasted anyway? What if this well, test is, is that completely true? wrong? Well, then I've lived a really full five years at that point. <laughs> okay. Right. And okay. I can continue Got going on. Okay. okay. So here's another one. Um, well, actually, here's an interesting fact about that. 68% uh, of people cite death as their biggest fear. That's true. Uh, obviously, I, I, I do too. Public next speaking. Public speaking, public yeah. speaking <laughs> and singing the national anthem is another one <laughs> I'd add to that list. All right, next up, a sculpture outside a church in North Carolina is garnering a lot of attention. Uh, from a distance, right there, it appears to be a homeless person sleeping on a bench. But when you get closer, you see it's actually a sculpture of Jesus. And while very little of the sculpture's uh, face is showing, the wounds on his feet are full dis in full display. Uh, now this, okay. what do you think about this uh, symbolizing uh, Jesus and, and how, 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 how it has to do with the church? Are you, you on board with this or are you not on board with this? Mm. I don't know. I, 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 I do, but I don't think people know that it's Jesus. I'm gonna, All right, well, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm gonna say no, 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 no. All right, we got a lot more back here. <laughs> Stay with us.